Welcome. To the Spy Family Edition of From the Script to the Screen, going over season two. This is still the catch up edition, so we're going over volume eight, which covers episodes 30 to 33. The infamous cruise arc, one of my favorite arcs of the manga for sure. Throughout the series, we've seen many instances of Anya having her moments to shine and Lloyd having their moments to shine. And so this particular arc was one that I enjoyed because we got a little bit of backstory on your more information about her assassin career. And we got to see her shine throughout these episodes. So definitely one of my favorite moments so far. As always, gotta shout out the creator, Tatsuya Endo. And gotta give my appreciation to the studios, WIT Studios and Clover Works coming together, bringing these chapters to life. Did a great job of still trying to keep the family friendly, but still having murder all across the episode. So shout out to them. Episodes were done very well. Great music, choreography, and colorful, like I said. So it was a sight to see. Volume eight covers missions 45 to 53 and short mission six which was right at the end of episode 33. So again, action-packed episodes. All of this takes place on the crew, so it was all pretty compact. The three episodes go by quick, just like the volume did. And I feel like the first moment where we see Yor really shine is where she's forced to do battle in a public space. Beforehand, she already had the worry of having to keep her target protected during this voyage that was already gonna be full of people. And, and to make it even worse, Anya and her great telepath powers ended up winning a contest and was placed on this same ship. So to make matters worse for Yor, it's just something else that she had to worry about. But we know that Anya is an action junkie, just like me. And she feels like being able to help Yor with her mission will be fun. And so in this instance, again, like I said, what's funny about this show is how much misunderstandings happen. And in this point, oblivious to Yor, but plotted out by Anya, she ends up helping out Yor and makes it look like they're putting on a performance for the people that are on the ship. And so even though she's facing somebody skilled, and I guess you could say well equipped, she was able to handle it quickly and in a manner that avoided it being more of a ruckus. So again, we, we see just how talented Yor is because honestly, throughout this whole thing, the positions that she's put in aren't easy for a normal person to handle. And, and so we see just how skilled these garden members are. I'm interested in seeing the rest of the members. We see the director also step in and handle business. So like Frankie said, who's on the cover, we do start to see why these garden people might be able to take out an entire squad by themselves. And so to get a little bit into the mission that Yor is executing, she's supposed to protect this ex-mobster's wife. The leader, I guess you could say, of garden has some ties to these people and so he feels a debt to them and wants to see that she's able to get safe passage to a life away from crime. And so they're supposed to protect them for three days with the second day, them hopefully being able to get off the cruise. And so the second day is where we see it really kick up where they try to get to the point that they're able to escape. A lot of the, the assassins basically have a trap set up for them. And so here it is where we really see your be the top class assassin that she is. Outnumbered, out equipped, and you could say out strategized. She's not really supposed to win this situation. But again, in elegant fashion, <laughs> like the 
like the headmaster of Eden Academy would say. She basically takes them all out. She does suffer damage. She's not invincible, so she does take a few licks herself. Like she admits, since this is a high bounty, the people that she's facing are very skilled themselves. Throughout these episodes, we see them do things like catch her off guard and spring traps on them. So it's not like she's been able to walk by, breeze through these couple days. But again, you're facing somebody that's done it for a long time. And so she is able to hold her own. Something that we do see throughout these episodes is a little bit of doubt that's been playing in the back of her head. She states how it's been a while since she's actually had to even perform a job. And so she kind of starts to feel like she might not need to be an assassin anymore. Again, these people have been spending time together for a while. So it's not wrong to think that they're starting to get a little bit of attachment to each other. And so yours kind of thinking that family life might really be for her and that it might be something that she could lean into. But the people around her are kind of reminding her that she needs to stay on her toes, stay focused because her life is on the line. And so we see it cost her a little bit and it does look like she might not be able to make it through. But we see her kind of pick back her resolve and kind of regain her passion. Even though we don't know too much about Garden, it does make it seem like the people that they take out are citizens that might have stepped out of line, shady characters. So it does make her feel like she has a purpose and just states how there's people that have to basically do the dirty work. And so she feels like that's her position and she kind of re-embraces it and steps into it. So shout out to Yor for the badass that she is and basically giving us three episodes of a masterclass or a volume. Like I said, one of my favorites so far and well done. We know that she's not out of the woods yet, but if my back was against the wall, I'd put my money on Yor. And so we'll see what happens next volume. I know the movie's coming out at the end of the month, so we'll see how that goes. Looking forward to it. And I'll be back with the next volume. Let me know what you guys thought about these episodes. 